Okay, so it's big scale, it's June 22, 2023. Use that your stuff as an attendee. All right, well, let's start off with uh, this issue uh, that Brian reported. So we were seeing some timeouts with the performance lane. Uh, it looks like <clears throat> we're able to get to the bottom of this. <clears throat> we, uh, this issue is tied to, um, wait, this isn't what I was looking for. Um, Oh, no, this is it. Okay. So the um, this issue, I guess, is tied to. Uh, oh, okay. Brian changed it, I think. Yeah, it was edited. Okay. There was another pull request in here. That's why I was confused. Okay. There was um, the. So perfect. Okay. It looks like it's been diagnosed. So. Um, and I think this is probably the alternative. No, maybe not. Okay. But anyway, the, it looks like this has been diagnosed. Basically, what was happening was the. Um, uh, the uh, the Qvert test or the performance test was timing out. Like you can see here, the test was taking 21 minutes, and then all of a sudden it went to 45 minutes. So uh, had some had some, I didn't dive into this too much, but it had something to do with the way we're cleaning up events. Um, so uh, looks like this pull request will will handle it. So that way we're not timing out constantly. So this looks like this is being handled. All right, that's that's good. I just wanted to mention it just so it's on everyone's radar. All right, let's get into B1. All right, LA, what do we have left for this? Uh, a bunch of things merged. Yeah, so I think we've merged the periodic jobs for uh, scraping the data, which is in the nice to have section point one. Um, yeah. If you give me one second. Okay, so if you go to the CI benchmarks um, repository, you should be able to look at the commit history. And we have had two weeks of, uh, we have had two weeks of collection of data where the job ran uh, successfully. So that that one is. Hold on, you want me to go to the performance? You want me to go here? Yep, that's so. Yeah, if you look at the commit history. Ah, uh, okay. Here we go. So, um, let's take a look. Uh, it's the right, yeah. Okay, cool. So we've got the last three were from the from the bot. So something happened with the run on uh, 0614 that it had to do it twice. That was when Daniel was running this thing manually. So I assume it was some failure. But from there, we had the first successful run on Tuesday. Last okay. Tuesday, yeah. So this gave us um, one of these, that's one. Yeah, if you go all the way at the yeah. bottom, yeah, it gave us five, well, 10, uh, 15, I think it should be 15 of those jobs. Yeah, looks like about 15. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that part of automation is working as expected. So we are getting the data into this repository. Now, up next, what we need, well, before we go to the next, um, I also took the time to set up the GitHub pages for this. So. Okay. Um, the the links below, yeah, those are actually redirected from the per scale repository and um, index.html is what is being rendered. 
did you commit it in here or how did you do it? Yeah, it's uh, if you go to the weekly section and then oh, either one here. Shows, yeah, the, all index. the way down. Ah, there it is. Yeah, okay. that's the gotcha. data. Okay. So if you cool. notice, this is from two weeks ago. So um, what is happening currently is that the automation is only doing part of the job, which is scraping the data. We mm -hmm. need one more set of automation to plot graphs from this scrape data. So that is the next uh, part that we'll need help from. As in we'll so have can to we do, some, yeah. Can we do like this, right? Oh, I guess we talked about this. This is like the post submit, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is this one, okay. Yeah, that's what we need next uh, for automating this. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think that's the updates I have. Um, up next, I will, I think next week I will work on uh, screenshotting these data manually and uh, putting it into the document uh, repository in Cubebot. Should open a PR um, sometime next week um, for us to review. Okay. Okay. And um, one more thing. I wanted to bring up is that in my local development environment, I have the plots uh, up to June 12th. So what I was thinking is, if you go back to that uh, performance repository, uh, and then the one of the weekly index.html. Yeah. So I have uh, data up to June uh, 12th, which was right before the branch. And what I can do is instead of this index.html, which will be the current uh, main branch tracking, I can do a v1.index.html and commit it there. So that way it will still be available via this GitHub pages website. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should have both main as well as version um, plots going forward. Uh, okay, so we can just we can index this with a with a v1. Okay, yeah. So what we were saying is like we have um you create a new directory, right? And then be v1. No, I'll just add it here, like v1 dot index dot html or something like that. Will that still render there. still in the what in the uh? Will that still render in the Git page? Yeah, we would have to uh, explicitly say v1 dot index dot html. So we'll have to do like fully qualified path, but that would okay. render, yeah. Okay. I guess that's okay. I mean, the other way would would be, um, okay. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if it really makes matters, but like you could do a, you could have your, your directory with the one in here and then just yeah. tag an index HTML too. And then we just leave one at the top level for the latest. Yeah. That's, because it, I guess works. what I think about is like if um, we got ten of these, I mean it, it works. I don't know. Like it, it doesn't matter. I, I this is just a, a preference. I think like yeah. Because let's put it this way. Um, I mean, very minor, but like if I were to go to this web page, like and I wanted to go to the V one thing, like yeah. I mean, I guess I would just do this. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you could still do it your way too, right? That's just means we're gonna do. Yeah, I, I think um, it doesn't matter. The URL doesn't matter. That's what I was thinking as to, we can keep it there for um, historical um, plots. Yeah, let's keep it around for sure. I guess we, it doesn't matter. Whatever you wanna call it, it's fine. We can, if we find a problem with it, we can always move it into a directory yeah. if we don't like it, so it's fine. Okay. Cool. All right. So we've got some. So we've got our data. All right. So cool. That's that's some good progress. Okay. Um, so these for these uh, for the documents. Uh, 
ideally we'd get this in so we want to get this in we got to get this in before the release because uh, otherwise it's going to get into like a it would be in a, the next the next one like it would be in um well we'd have to cherry pick it back and then it would be in an, another tag so we want to be it we want to get it we want to do the back for it before the um before the 10 tag is yeah. cut. So yeah. you've got you've got I don't know 12 days, I think. Is what you've got. Yeah, that should not be a problem. I'll okay. um I would hopefully have it for us before the next community call, this one. Okay. So yeah, because can, so think of this as well. Like it's the four, it's July 4th. The release is actually July 4th. So probably so next week is, is like going to be our only chance. That was what I'd say to get this in. Sure. So the sooner yeah. you get this, like Monday, Tuesday next week, let's blast this around. And um, I think next Wednesday I'm talking with the, some of the maintainers. So um, I have this on my list for you when I'm pretty sure, right? Did I put this on my yeah. one? I think I do. And as long as it's there, um, yeah, here we go. Okay, as long as it's here, then um, I'll mention this as well. So, so try to have this before i think it's wednesday and we we're talking to the maintainers okay sure um are you yeah, going to be wednesday. talking in the uh community call um next wednesday no um i always have a conflict so i've been i've had a hard time making it okay yeah uh, yeah so bring I it up bring it up there thing. and yeah bring if you if you want to bring it up there go ahead like um but i'll i'll talk to like a I should, like Roman, I should be. I should be talking to Roman and, um, and probably David. And so we should be able. If if we don't have, if it's not approved by Wednesday, I think you know I'll mention it. and We can get it approved really quickly. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I'll let you know as soon as I have that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else to lay for a six scale v one? I think we were looking good. Like I think the screenshots, right? That's all we wanted, and then. In the blog as well. Um, I still I have not. I don't think anything has been a lot has been written. So we can um, let's collaborate on this uh, probably after the fourth. Like it's going to be after the release that we want to have this. But I'll double. Let me double check because I'm I'm at least. I don't think this is yeah. going to go out the same day. Let me just double check, but that, that's the case, and then. We'll figure out what we need to talk about this. Sure. Um, I think one more thing is that I will probably need Daniel's help to get that uh, post submit job uh, for for the plots. Okay. So <clears throat> um, you want to start a th start another thread on Slack and tag them and let's get um or even Lubo too can probably help. Maybe both. I mean, let's let's tag them and then let's let's start get the conversation going. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's needed for for the V1 release. So we still have time, but I wanted to put it on their radar so that as sure. as they have time, they can, you know, help us. Yeah. I mean, I, I think last time the issue worked pretty well, like uh, both were responsible on the issue. So if you think the issue going through creating an issue and tagging them and letting them know what needs to be done, that's that works too. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. I'll create an issue on the benchmark repository. And oh well, here in so the project infra hosts all the pro automation for all repositories. So I'll probably create an issue here and um, tag it to this main issue. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, yeah, that's all I had. Thanks. Okay, cool. Okay, well we're close to the to having the to uh, having this in v1 this is exciting so it's awesome to see all right um all right we're going to do this again we're going to talk about these phase transition time step um, document so we're going to present this afternoon i thought we were going to present two weeks ago but um i think that it wasn't on the schedule long enough in advance so people didn't show up to the meeting so now we know um it's on the schedule for this thursday I even sent it over to, to Wars Tech just to give them a heads up too. So um, hopefully we get a good attendance and we can get some feedback. Um, I made some changes uh, pretty much 
like the the focus uh, has shifted a little bit, um, and and instead of centering around like I think before we talked about like I was talking about volumes and other things like I, I'm just centering it around the the idea of the phase transition timestamp and really the difference between this phase transition timestamp and um, the existing metrics. And I think that would really highlight the point that we're trying to do here. So I'll, I'm just gonna go to that section because I think that's really the, um, the meat of this. So um, when you look at the metric, like pod start SLI duration seconds, uh, it's very focused. It captures the, the critical phases of the pod startup time. So those are like the things that we believe are gonna influence the part pod startup time, but are in control of Kubernetes, like that are totally within the code base, within the kubelet and whatnot. And it's not influenced by outside things like pulling images. It's not outside, influenced by things like um, in a containers and other stuff. Um, so now that's, now that's important, right? That's what sort of makes this useful for, for isolating the, the pod startup time within a component. However, there's, there's sort of another way to look at this and that these outside forces are actually important. And then if you look at the average user of a Kubernetes cluster, they, for the most part, are going to have a very bespoke cluster and everything is going to be different between you and me. And so understanding what it takes for a uh, pod to go from one point, a starting point to an ending point, it's important to understand all of the pieces that, that go that could affect it, not just the little isolation points. And but you're doing that responsibly, like doing it in a way that's actually easily consumable by the user. And so that would be the difference is that pod a start SLA duration seconds is very focused on the how your particular performance pod startup time in the kubelet. What we're proposing with phase transition timestamps is about talking or exposing the the high level, I guess you could say, um, transitions an object goes through, and and how it's affected by all of the outside forces, so that someone with a, a custom cluster can understand what it is their pod is going through, where it's slow, where it's fast, and so they can understand how to adjust things. So things like use cases would be like, we have a hardware problem. That can be a very easily thing that's diagnosable when you see that, okay, we are taking a long time to, I don't know, let's say it was something to do with any containers to start our, to start our any containers because of this, this phase transition, right? That's something we wouldn't see in this, um, in this SLA, but we want to see in these phase transition timestamps. Yeah, go ahead, Chang. Um, yeah, I think your explanation makes sense. Um, so I'm just trying to understand the new metrics that we're proposing pod phase transition time from creation seconds. Um, does it include like the like um like the outside forces that you mentioned previously, such as um, pulling images? Uh, like I'm just trying to understand because um like on a like on the first paragraph, uh, I'm seeing that the pod the pod start SLI duration seconds uh, does not uh, does not like it's not influenced by forces outside of the control of Kubernetes, like pulling images. Um, so as a contrary to this statement, the new metrics should consider these forces. Right. So I'm just um, so I'm just trying to um, make sense. How is the new metrics part phase transition time functions will consider these forces if we are like if we are pulling the above paragraph right next to this part, new metrics down below. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So things like um, pending and like these phases, this stuff is like, um, this is like the pod getting ready, like it's not scheduled or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So this should include things like the in a container, pulling images, all this other stuff. Um, the scheduler hasn't worked on it yet. Any, any of this stuff like from pending to running is going to conclude all of that stuff that um, where we have to pull the image and run it in containers and all any other hooks that we want to do. 
Um, so from my impression of um of the name of the new matrix that we're proposing, this matrix might not like it might not be able to capture stuff like pulling images at a very at a very granular detail, right? Um, like which is fine because you know because the scope of this matrix, as it's suggested by name, probably won't cover these. But um, if we are going to explicitly mention that we want to consider forces like pulling images, but the new matrix doesn't doesn't immediately address this problem, and my concern that the reaction from community would be kind of confused. Um, just you know just like similar to how I reacted saying that, okay, we are proposing this, this, this new metrics um, as like, as a way to solve the, like, like the statement that you proposed in a previous paragraph, such as, you know, uh, you want to see the time in pulling images, but however, this new metrics does not show that. So perhaps well, can the, we, yeah. yeah. Well, so, so I, I wanted was thinking, to answer that part. Cause like, uh, I think the, the, so what what exists today like um this is where like we do have a way to measure how long it takes to pull the image today i, we I do. didn't find anything wait how well how do you what do you do to um, measure the whole it's not really a measurement um so when you do coop ctl describe pod if like if the pod needs to pull the image it should show on the event but i'm not sure if that's a metrics that we're publishing Right. Okay. So that, that's that, that's actually what that's exactly the point. That like, what did you have to do to figure this out? Right. You had to then run a a, a kubectl a client command, reach out to the API, right. scrape right. it, and then and then then what? Then you have to what? Put it into an Excel spreadsheet and then do this they 100 times and then graph it. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So so like you see where this is, becomes a problem. So now this isn't specifically about. Um, pulling image time it's that is one example that is not included and there's uh, in terms of looking at the overall intent time mm -hmm. and and so my point is is that all those little pieces right we're not including them so what we can do is we can include them and what we once we are able to include them now what and we have metrics to expose this um we can start giving the user areas that they can focus their attention to so mm -hmm. it could be like, oh, I can, I see like Shang's cluster, his Shang's homeless lab is really slow from from pending to running. So what happens in pending to running? Like we can list those things. We, maybe it's five things. Hey, it's pulling images in a container, whatever other stuff, right? So now we've we've actually isolated this down more than what we were doing before, which is mm -hmm. which is what like I was just I would have to watch every pull every container in my cluster and try and figure out. Where the bottleneck is, it's not really scalable. It's not even. I'm not gonna. It's not gonna be useful. So what this would do is, right? It gives me. It gives me a much closer look. Now you could say there's more to be desired, and I and I mm -hmm. I actually agree with you. Like this phase is is very high level, and I and it's something that I think I'm trying to at least look at as something that's reasonable based on you know all the APIs that exist today. You could mm -hmm. say like, and, and I mentioned this in the definition in that where phase is, is specific to status phase field, but, and, and the reason we went this way is because it worked really well with Kubert, right? All of the, um, it isolated the difference between Kubert's control plane and Kubernetes control plane. So it worked really well for solving that, which was valuable for us, but it may not be that valuable for some of the core APIs, in which case this needs to be expanded. So I, I totally understand that that's also your perspective. It's like, maybe there's more to do here. I, and very well, it could be. But I think um, the overall point is like I think I think it's easy for us to, to at least to grasp right now that there's definitely value when you look at the when you look at these phase transition times and you look and you see where some of the bottlenecks are. It's much mm -hmm. better than just looking at the the pod creation timestamp and then well, there's nothing else to compare it to. So it's mm -hmm. you know whatever you have to do manually to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I understand the value of like adding these metrics, but like, I think my nitpick was, you know, um, like, because previously, uh, before I read about the statements, my focus was, you know, completely on the volume phase transition time, right? But by right. seeing stuff like um, uh, pulling, like the time to pull images, like from the, from the paragraph, that's where my thoughts start to think, hey, should we? 
maybe perhaps try to include more as well. You know, that kind of um, distracted uh, my thoughts of like focusing on pot a little bit. So, um, so if it was me, you know, perhaps I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like mention explicitly on like on stuff like um, pulling like images just um i don't know like try to replace it with, with something like generic such as you know like the like the time spent before volume attachments or or like something more generic so that we can be more focused on the um like on the pot timestamps sorry uh, like on the volume timestamps yeah so i i, I understand sense. like um yeah. we we do want to do volume stuff so the reason i mentioned it mm -hmm. because this explicitly says it does not include this stuff. Where's this? Um, excluding pull images, run into containers and other stuff, right? It's ex it's explicitly excluding the stuff. So I, I'm just trying to highlight the contrast. It's like, we we're okay. saying we don't okay. want to do that. So yeah, I understand where you're going. So here's Shang where I'm thinking like, um, to your point, which is like, yeah, we want to expand this. I'm, I'm trying to keep this like really simple um, because once we start getting into like, like I, I could see this this column expanding quite a bit. We can get to volumes and other stuff, but I want to see if we can if this makes sense just for the base case of of a pod and and just explaining it this way. Well, let's see if upstream can can at least attach to the idea, and then let's see if we get some traction that way. Because I think if we can get it some traction this way, I think um, it really opens the door for us to look at this in other perspectives, like including volumes and other stuff and. Um, I think there's a lot, there's like a huge number of things that we can we can expand this to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, Ryan, I heard uh, some more thoughts on this. So I, I just pasted a link in, in the chat. Um, cube straight matrix is um, uh, an, a project which already has a cube pod status phase metric. If you scroll down, yeah, there it is. Um, and this one has uh, all the phases. So pending, um, running, completed, all of those. Um, it's in the right section, the, the rightmost column. Uh, so questions from this is that, have you had a chance to explore this, whether this uh, works for us? Um, it seems no, very similar. Is it, yeah, um, it's just a gauge does, this have, it? does this have the, does this, a type this, gauge? Yeah, I think this only gives us like the number of things that are in pain. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's, yeah, like it was just a counter if I recall correctly. Yeah, so this will go up. This will go up and down. Counter will just Got go it. up. So this is yeah. So this is just pen, the number of pending running scheduled in, in a cluster. Okay. So the status of scheduling process. So even know. if even if this goes up and down, that's what will help, right? Look, so. We could get like a rate of pods in pending state and rate of pods in running state. And if the rate is going down, that means pods are transitioning to running state. Does that like I'm trying to think how the proposed metric is different from from this? Let's see. So the um, rates that we transition between the two. Like what if yeah, we are like, creating stuff like in the background? So let's say you want to the the rate of going from one state to another, but there could be some outside forces that's influencing the rate, right? So, for example, uh, you want to see um, like the rate from uh, from pending state to scheduled state, for example. But let's say there's a background task that's constantly deleting the plots, then that would skew the number, right? Yeah, but that um, I think that can happen in all cases, though. I, I think that the problem is mm -hmm. that we have to figure out so the rate going so the rate that this is increasing or decreasing let me see so i don't i don't know if this would work because 
So what this doesn't give us is, it doesn't give us a time. So even if it was a rate, it would tell us like, it would give us like, um, it would give us like, uh, it would give us a slope. Like, it would give for like, like a pot per time, like a pot per minute, pot per, pot per second of transition, right? Which is not exactly equal to the timestamps duration that we're looking for. Yeah, so we, it will not give us like P95 of creation to running like we get in QPod. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, then the next question is that the, the phases of a pod are only restrictive to pending, running, and, and failed, which is very um, high level. So are you proposing that the metric will have much more fine-grained um, fine grained labels, which, which include other details like image pooled, uh, scheduled, um, init container completed, and things like that, or? Um, no, I'm not proposing just, that. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. I, I think um, the way I'm looking at this is actually to go about this as the high level. I think that's... So, to me, that seems to be the easiest on ramp. However, if if it's if it's not useful enough, or we just think we can do better, then we can do better. I mean, I, this is really easy to expand this idea to to like think of it this way. It's really easy to expand this idea to actually replace this, right? Because this is this is exactly what we're proposing. This there's a, there's actually no difference between this. And this, the only thing that this does is this is isolating one little critical point in time. We wanna, we wanna, what we couldn't technically do is, is put timestamps on all of the critical points in time, which would include this one. So um, I'm saying the critical points in time are the phase transitions, but maybe that's not granular enough. I, I think it decently, I think it's decently granular enough. Like I think it's, I think it's pretty helpful, but. You know, I think it just like at least the way I'm approaching this is that this doesn't prevent us from being more granular. It's just sort of the idea is, is I think makes sense be, from from a user perspective. Users are familiar with these phases. Um, I think I think there's value in seeing the transition between them. But like I said, it's not useful for every API. Maybe maybe it's not for every API, but I think for pods it would be. Okay, yeah, the, the reason why this question comes to me is that, so let's say if you are proposing that we'll be able to find out how much time Kubernetes takes to pull the images, right? Then the same question as Shang raised with the, with the ad, given phase or the proposed phase, I'm not sure if we can find that detail because, okay, um, the, we could see that the pod spent more time in pending phase because it's pulling the image, but pending phase could have all the other things it needs to do where the time was spent, right? Or could right. have been spent. You're right. And so what I would say to you is that, is that, that yes, you, you can't isolate just the, to the granularity level of how long it takes to pull an image. However, you can, if you you could lower the um, you can isolate the the things that could be down to a much smaller list if you noticed pending to running time was your bottleneck there's only so many things that, that are happening there and so if you're the user like this is one of the places you could look and and this is where i think it would get obvious where like if you start seeing this, oh, okay, this is taking a long time. Let's start investigating a few things. Let's um, let's say they have a lot of changes to a local registry. I want to say that's a big improvement. It should be noticeable, right? We should see the pending to to running time go down. So we should see some. So we can already see the improvement. So that's that's where we'll see the feedback. So I agree with you. You're not like going to get the granularity that it's obvious to the user. I guess maybe that's the point. It's not it's not staring them in the face that it is pulling images that is slow. It's more like you'll have to do a little bit of investigation, but it's it's the list isn't, you know, it's not infinitely long. 
Um, yeah, I I understand that part, but the problem with phase is that going from pending to running, there's just one transition, right? So let's say if your overall metric is creation timestamp to running, which is 60 seconds, and then creation timestamp to pending, and then from pending uh, to running, then, then that will also be 60 seconds, right? So from creation timestamp to pending will be zero because as soon as a uh, pod is created, it is accepted as in pending state. And then from there, it will go to running state. So what I'm trying to figure out is what is the value add in, in this additional pending state if all that it means is that um, it, it's capturing one more phase uh, but but the actual value will be the same. Yeah, I don't I don't know what gets, what's get done in the creation depending time. I mean, I guess that's like where the cubelet's doing a little bit of work. It's probably it's probably something similar to this. And then the pending to running is where we're going to get the bulk of our time. Yeah, I mean, I think what you're saying is that it's not it's not um, granular enough to. Mm -hmm. It's not granular enough. I mean, maybe there's a schedule. Yeah, maybe there's I'm like hidden scheduling phases in here or something. I don't know. I haven't looked at it that deep yet. Yeah, no, I, th I think the scheduling phase is present in other things like conditions or the node name. Right, so, there's like other stuff. Yeah, like the scheduler yeah. posts something when it says it's actually done scheduling. It's not really a, it's like, a, I don't know. A, yeah, it's not really a, it's not in the phase. Yeah, so I, I mean, this proposal and the idea makes a lot of sense, but I think um, the the um, overarching um, feeling I have is that um, it, will it add new value? If it does, then then it makes a lot of sense. But um, we just have to make sure that um, that's the case. But I think what you're saying is that it's not granular enough to add a lot of value. Right, like the, this is same or will be very similar to pod start SLM. Uh, I feel like scheduling stage should be included in the phase so that we can have some granularity. Well, so I, um, yeah, I, I agree, Shank. I, I actually think this is the discussion we want to have. <laughs> I think like, you know what I mean? Like, I think um, I, I, this is exactly the discussion I want to have with in the, in the, in the upstream six scale, because to me, this is like, like we're, we're getting opinions here from like how granular this should be, which is where we want to go. Like, I, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is this doesn't have to be perfect. I, I don't like, I'm not trying to make this design document perfect. We just want to get enough interest that like we can kind of that we can shape this into something that's achievable so and, and yeah, that it works and solves something and not not so much like like i don't need to like like i i don't agree i, I agree with you like but what i'm saying is like in terms of presentation like we might get more interest leaving this leaving an obvious question you know like in the description like that yeah, okay. I, so I think that perspective makes sense. Just wanted to know what's our opinion, right? So what yeah. I'm trying to do it is between the three of us or, or between this community, um, try to align on an uh, opinion. Um, yeah. So we could, we could present that as well along with this. So um, at least my understanding is that we should identify the big, uh, the 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 biggest things that we need, right? So volume attachment time, uh, scheduling time, network attachment time. The, those are like three I could think of, right, at the top of my head, and mm -hmm. find a way to add that somewhere in this uh, in this metric. Um, 
I think if we if we have a way to filter that, then it will be much more um, valuable uh, metric for for breaking down this start SLI duration second. Yeah. No, I agree. That makes perfect sense to me. I, and that, I, maybe that's what you're saying earlier, Shang, is like you wanted to, you wanted to see like, um, we wanted to get to a point that we start seeing the volume attachment yeah. stuff in here. And, yeah. um, and I kind of have a feeling that, um, say that we propose this and then we go ahead and propose we should add more faces. So for example, perhaps we can even tell the community or can propose to, to the community thing that, you know, we need a scheduling phase, we need, I don't know, like maybe we need uh, like a image polling phase, for example, then then one of the possible reactions that I can anticipate from the community is that, um, say, if you want to know the scheduling time pods in general, then you can just scrape the scheduling metrics, right? You can just scrape the metrics from scheduler and see the scheduling metrics around scheduler. And perhaps similarly, they will also say, if you want to you know, see the volume attachment metrics, they can be like, um, then you can, you know, then you can pull the metrics from your CSI, and then the CSI should tell you all these metrics. So that's something that came in, came in, came into my mind, and I'm not sure how so we can, I think, you know. So I think yeah. there is one um, gap which those metrics don't address. So the CSI will give you uh, metrics for binding the the or for actually provisioning the volume right but it does not have well I, I, this is an open question does it have visibility mm -hmm. on how much time kubelet takes to actually mount that volume uh no but like um, my point is that you know the community can like it, like the community's reaction can can be like instead of adding these metrics on the Kubernetes core projects such as pod itself, uh, they can be like you know we can add these metrics to the third party uh, plugins that we are doing, and then we can piece these metrics together, and then yeah. that can give us something similar to what we want. So you know um so um so to answer your question directly, CSI you know they know how long it takes to provision to to provision the volume. But it doesn't really have visibility on the API server side or on the Kubernetes side. But the community, but the community can be like you know, um, you can um, like you can have CSI metrics on one side, and then you can have Kubernet or API server, you know, like um, metrics on the other side. If you piece them together, then you can have you know some sort of a picture of what you, like what you're trying to achieve here. Yeah, so that's the high level concern that I have. Like, they can be, uh, they can, like, they might as well say that these metrics can go somewhere else rather than on the pod itself. Yeah, I I see your concern. Yeah. I think, I think we can, um, we might be able to address that if we identify this gap. So I think what what at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is enhance kubelet's performance right how fast can kubelet go can take a pod and go make it into running state and the way we are trying to do that is by identifying or giving visibility to users into some metrics so if we can share this um, goal to the scalability um community call and then from that goal explain that these are the gaps in the kubelet metrics or in in x metrics that would really help achieve this goal i think we we could uh, you know convince the community but yeah i i agree and that could be a potential reaction so what you said there earlier it's like these are the gaps right the uh, that 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 is what the message I, I want to convey here is like the example I'm using is pulling images, but I don't know maybe this would be a better way to say this, or maybe the phase transition part is confusing. I, I don't know like that, but that's what, that is what we want to go like at least the message and the details of this stuff like I, this is loose. I, 
like I was saying up in the definitions, we're not tied to phase. We want to, what we want to do is, I think a better way to put this is expose the gap between something like this and the rest of the stuff that we're missing, which is like pulling images out of stuff. Like we're missing all of this. Yeah. So just expose um, the gap and then let's let's get to let's get to a place where we can where we can okay. have discussions and, and get and I think we'll be able to get some traction that way. Yeah. Right. So I think if sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, I kind of just wanna throw it out uh, like maybe an alternative idea on how we can approach this. So instead of proposing a new metrics, um, do you think it will be like, can we perhaps gain more attractions if we propose new faces first? So we propose uh, new faces. No, I don't think so. No? Like, because okay. that's going to be, that's going to be hard. I, I don't think that would be a ton of work. I, I think like, all right. All right. Sure. Yeah. All right. I think what we, if we, I, I, this is, I think this is sort of the pit, this is like, we're getting to the pitfall of using mm -hmm. face, which is, which is why I have a definition up there because Mm -hmm. It is. It is very like, even to Alay's point, right? Like pending the scheduling is going to be like ninety nine percent of the time, right? So what is the point right. of it, right? So it's not very. These phases may not suffice in terms of what we're trying to accomplish. So mm -hmm. maybe we need to look at something other than phase, and that's okay. But I, I don't think the path of going creating more phases is the right thing. I think what we can do is sort of create artificial phases and be like, hey, like this is a phase, right? This is a okay. pod start SLA phase or pod start SLA duration phase, right? We call it whatever we want. And, and that's sort of in our minds, like the, the phase that, that something is happening or something critical is happening, whatever. We probably call it something other than phase just to avoid confusion, but you know, that's, you get the point. Like we, we get more granular. So okay. Rand, what I was trying to say earlier was very similar along this line is that, um, there are two things that convey information in the pod API. One is this space, which is high level thing. And then the other is other two things are conditions and events. Mm -hmm. So th those actually, to Shang's point, those end up being in kubecutter describe uh, output. So if we can find a, a list of all the uh, um, events or, um, conditions that appear before pod goes to running state and just plug our uh, transition time or metric into those um, into those uh, state change, then right. I think we should be able to achieve the level of granularity we want. So what I was trying to say is if we can go through the, those conditions and, and events and find out like four or five important ones, we can bring it as potential gaps and and propose this. Yeah, okay. So maybe what I can do is like, so I, I think what what I wanna do with this one is like, I, I, I think this illustrates at least there is a gap between, there's a difference between these two things, right? This is a little too high level. I think what we're getting at, I think we're, we're sort of proving that out, how, we're proving that out here. This is too low level. So um, well, let, let me see if I can, I'll, like you said, Alay, let me see if I can grab some conditions and I'll, I'll, let me just add them as a list of here as suggestions that like, or I guess alternatives to phase that we could look at. And, and maybe that can be sort of the way we can springboard the conversation past, past phase if we get stuck here, you know, on, on these. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that works. Something like that. Because I'm not going to have enough time to go through and like deep dive into all these things and get like all of them. So I, I, I'd rather we like we'd rather keep hold on to phase the way it is now. We can you know we can adapt. All right, let me add a section for this. Um, I think this should be easy to get. We'll just get some. Um, just grab some conditions. Uh, all right, I'll come up with a name for this and um, have another diagram or something okay yeah perhaps we can have one based on face one based on other things and maybe called pot event transition time yeah i mean that's 
oh, you can just have one under here where it's like um, more granular and that you'll yeah. the point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You do that. Yeah, so the idea is that like if you are not able to find the information from the face, you can look at the other metrics which you know which consider the events that are in face. Something like that. All right, that'll do. I can just post them in the description there. I feel like events are not, are events like a uh, strict finite state machines? I feel like they are just, they are not like strict finite state machines, right? Yeah, they're not. Unlike faces. Um, conditions are more um, state machines, but for mm -hmm. events, we'll have to infer. Uh, so the code path that raises those events will have to infer somehow the state transition. So the implementation will be challenging, but I, this conveys the idea, I guess. Yeah, so this would be like, do you guys have any, um, do you guys have a pot around? Okay, hold on, let me see if I can find one. Just do me a favor and look, grab a pot and tell me like some of the conditions or something. I know there's one for scheduling. I just don't know what it looks like. I was looking at that yesterday when I was thinking about this. Okay, um, just a second. Um, sharing it on the chat. Um, All right, so we have, um, okay, successful detached volume. Okay, here we are. There we go, added interface, that's nice. It's not networking. We've got created container, started container. Oh wait, this is the main I'm gonna do this in order. So um... I'll have to delete that message. I think another one. Oh okay, yeah. If you want to post um. Yeah, I'm trying to. Can just post yeah, if you want to send it to me on Slack, I can do that. So we can, I can do this after. We don't have to do this now. I was just trying to see. I can't for some reason. I can't. Oh, there we go. I wasn't able to. No, I'm going to yeah, you can also shout them out like the specific ones, and I'll just paste them in there. Yeah, that would be better. Hold on. So I, I see containers started. Well, before that, I see topo aware scheduler. So scheduled, successful, attach volume. Okay, so add. Oh, it's successful a second, okay. Yeah, then you already have the add interface. Um, then I see pulled, so that's image pulled. All right. And created and started. Is it like container create? Container start. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, okay. So that would be, so that probably isn't running phase either. That's probably, we would probably need running too on the end of this. 
So I think started after started there is, is one like more a ready which is, like yeah readiness probe and then from there it goes to run. Is it like container ready or something, or do we have to we'd have to check the readiness probe? I guess we well this is probably the case where we'd come back up to the top and do ready. Um. So after that the ready phase is exposed as a condition on the pod api yeah, okay so so ready um, all right so yeah makes sense. okay and then if you want to capture the conditions um there are a couple here as well so the initialize is when the init container uh, completed then there is a containers ready, which is specifically for each container passing the readiness probe. And then there are two pods scheduled, with, which is we have already covered that. So we don't, so the conditions are not exposed as metrics, right? They're not in Prometheus. So, nope. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, that's pretty low hanging fruit, actually. Okay. So let me yeah. do this again. Okay. And then, all right, read, send, uh, read them off for me again. Um, con containers ready. Okay. Initialize. Initialize. Yeah, I think that should go first. Yeah, and then what else? Uh, uh, ready. So I think that is for the pod. And then uh, pod scheduled. That sounds good. Yeah, I think pod scheduled should go before the initialize. Yeah. Okay. I feel like the conditions are strictly in order, but the events are not strictly in order. So um, for events, I think um, I think these these events can happen at any order before the pod goes to red. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I guess. Um, well, so if these aren't ordered, then. I think conditions I guess it's are, okay. are order. I, yeah, it actually it doesn't. Well, even, so actually the order doesn't necessarily matter, I guess, as long as we don't go backwards, as long as we don't go from scheduled successful volume attached to like add an interface back to this one, it doesn't really matter because we're just going to get the time spent in each of them. And it, mm -hmm. So that actually doesn't make a difference. Yeah, if it's ordered, I guess you can just calculate it from the difference in timestamps. But if it's not ordered, then I guess you will have to implement it a bit different. I I think like that order or not is an implementation issue, yeah. right? We can yeah. it's implementation deal issue. Deal with that later. Yeah. Okay. This is good. I think this gives us like so if we need to go to this level of granularity, here here we go as another example. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. I think this is good. All right. Well, so let's. Uh, we're at time, so this is what the plan will be for this afternoon. We'll talk about this and see what we get. Okay, guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right. See you later. Bye. -bye.